All right, hello guys. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about a major, major bomb cyclone that's gonna be going on next week. I think this could go down as one of, if not the strongest storms of the year that's not a hurricane, obviously, for the United States. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social medias. Today's comment of the day is, which month is your favorite of the entire year? and why, and it has to be weather related, and I'll be picking one of those comments for tomorrow's video. Let's get right into things. All right, so we're gonna be starting out with our GFS model here. The GFS and the CMC seem to be in very good agreement here. I think that they're pretty certain we're gonna have a storm, but they've been kind of changing uh, south to north just a little bit, but nevertheless, this is gonna be a very, very widespread major storm. So I don't think the, lo the location is gonna matter too much here. Everywhere, East of the central United States is basically going to be dealing with some major impacts from the storm. We're starting things out at 2 a.m. on Tuesday, March 3rd, and that's when the storm is going to start developing down there for Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana. We see some precipitation up there for Tennessee and Kentucky as well. Let's move towards 2 p.m. on Tuesday afternoon, and you can see things really start to already take off. That's probably thunderstorms located there in the yellows and oranges. We're expecting a lot of severe weather with this one, a lot of potential for snow and a ton of flooding as well as major winds in excess of 40 miles per hour sustained. So, I mean, this is going to be a very major storm on all cylinders. Now, we're about to move on to where we're going to start seeing impacts as far as severe weather, and we're also going to watch this storm head towards the east coast of the United States as this thing starts to really intensify. All right, now we're going to head towards 8 p.m. on Tuesday uh, March 3rd here once again, and we see that that storm is kind of elongated from Oklahoma all the way up through into Kentucky and West Virginia. We also have some reds located there for northern Mississippi and portions of western Tennessee. That's probably some severe weather that's ongoing by this point. Uh, and this thing's really going to start to intensify here. Let's look at that CAPE, which is our convective available potential energy, and it's really just an index of all of our uh, factors that we take into account for severe weather is including moisture and temperatures and all that. And it really uh, gives a really good product and a good image of how much severe weather we could expect. And in these purple and pink, area, pink areas, we could be expecting severe weather as we head into Tuesday night into Wednesday, uh, Louisiana, Southern Arkansas, and through Mississippi and Alabama. I think even Tennessee and Georgia, maybe even further eastward. We're going to have to wait and see as we move forward, but I think there's a lot of severe weather potential here definitely with this one. Let's move on towards 2 a.m. on Wednesday, March 4th, and we can see that we have a low pressure system of 997 millibar low pressure system. Um, we have a lot of reds and oranges just to the west of there for Tennessee, Kentucky, and in through Ohio as well, and even Arkansas. Now, the term bomb cyclone is really used with low pressure systems that rapidly drop in pressure, and it, it basically bombs out. That's what we say, and this one's definitely going to do that as we move forward. We're about to move forward towards the middle of the day on Wednesday, March, March 4th. We're going to head through the morning and through the middle of the day where this thing's really just going to bomb out. All right, now at this point, we're at about 8 a.m. on Wednesday, March 4th, and we can see there's two areas of low pressure here on the GFS being indicated, two 996 millibar low pressure systems. Very, very strange stuff. But we definitely see those reds and oranges there for Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, and I think this is going to have strong thunderstorms and a strong line of windy thunderstorms. Uh, probably a squall line here of some sort going to be moving from west to east uh, that morning. Let's look at that cape once again which again is our convective available potential energy. I just told you guys about that. And we see for the panhandle of Florida, up through Alabama, northern Georgia, and just to the west of the Smoky Mountains, we have a lot of Cape available. And this is going to allow for some stronger to severe thunderstorms throughout the day Wednesday to develop. And let's look at those temperatures real quick. And this is going to actually tell a lot about our story here as well. Look to the west of the Smoky Mountains and just to the west of where we saw a lot of our precipitation, 40s, upper 40s, lower 50s, and then to the east of our storm, we have upper 60s and even 70s there, and that's going to tell me that we're probably going to have a very strong cold front coming through with very strong thunderstorms along it throughout the day Wednesday here, so that temperature difference is a big, big storyteller within this storm, I think. 
let's take a look at that radar a little bit more zoomed in once again and you can see those reds and oranges just where those cooler temperatures are and that's rapidly cooling down the temperatures as it passes regions so i think that's gonna have a very strong line of thunderstorms along it and we can see those reds being indicated by the gfs that usually means it thinks there's going to be uh very very strong thunderstorms within there or very heavy rain at the very least now, we're about to move on towards that night, and we're going to head into Thursday, March 5th, and we're really going to start to see this one head towards the coast and bomb out and even bring snow to some regions. So this storm is going to just take a bunch of different turns, uh, but very major impacts going to be felt all along the eastern United States. And first off, here's 8 p.m. on Wednesday, March 4th still. And we can see that low pressure system is a 992 millibar low pressure system located over Virginia. Those oranges and yellows indicated there over North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, even D.C. and eastern Pennsylvania. Probably some very heavy showers in the colder regions. Uh, but down south for North Carolina and Virginia, would not be surprised if you hear some thunder. Maybe going to have a marginal or slight risk for severe weather that day for the mid-Atlantic, I believe. Uh, Wednesday night heading into Thursday. That'll count as Wednesday though. Notice the Appalachian Mountains, a lot of dark blues. It's going to be cold enough for snow. Again, behind this line of thunderstorms, there's going to be very cold temperatures, even daytime temperatures in the 40s, so a colder storm. And up for the northeast, we also have some snow as well. Let's move on towards 2 a.m. on Thursday, March 5th, and we can see it's a 982 millibar low pressure system by this point. So again, bombing out. It just dropped, uh, I think, 10 millibar there uh, in six hours so really just dropping in pressure we see some moderate to heavy snow for the northeast the snow is to be determined these storms flip-flop with that but i think that there's high potential for snow uh, but the chance is only moderate to slight i think we'll have to wait and see so don't pay too much attention to that temperatures could vary so we're gonna watch it and i'll have a snowfall forecast later on as we head closer to the storm if that becomes a bigger threat Let's move on towards 8 a.m. on Thursday, and this one wants to show New England getting a lot of snow here, and it's a 973 millibar low pressure system, so again, dropping 9 millibar within nine or sorry, 6 hours, so I mean, very quickly dropping in pressure. I think it's a lot more realistic to see snow in New England rather than the Mid-Atlantic, so I believe it's a little bit more, but still, again, high um, potential low risk type event. Uh, and then as we head towards that afternoon, it's basically all said and done. Let's move on another frame, and this is going to be by 8 p.m. on Thursday, uh, and it, it's all said and done by that point. Now, we're about to move on and start talking about the impacts you could feel. We're going to talk about the total rainfall, the snowfall, and the wind for this storm. So we're going to start showing you guys your impacts you could be feeling from this storm. Now, the GFS is in great agreement with the Canadian model right now on this, and this is the rainfall. If you're in the green, that's anywhere from basically any rain to half an inch of rain. So already, that's kind of your lighter to moderate amounts. In the blues, that's where we're looking at already major amounts, half an inch to two inches of rain, which is a lot of rain for one event. Uh, in the pinks, that's where we're looking at two to six inches of rain. And you can see that's very widespread from Texas through Arkansas, the deep south, a lot of Tennessee and Kentucky, West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, and up through the mid-Atlantic basically and into New England. Very widespread area of two inches plus, so a ton of rain coming with this system. And then in those kind of reddish colors, that's where we're looking at six to even ten inches of rain, which would just be an extreme amount. Definitely extreme flooding chances and risks here along the deep south, some of those Tennessee and Kentucky areas, and then up into the east coast. Obviously, I mentioned that in the beginning of the video. I think flooding is a huge risk with this major, major storm system here. Let's look at that snowfall. And again, the risk for this is a little bit lower, or a lot, I would say, lower, but the, the potential is pretty high with the amount of moisture and the amount of cold behind it. So that's to be determined, like I said earlier on. But for right now, it's showing a general uh, six inches plus to be possible in some higher elevation areas throughout the northeastern United States. But we will give you guys more updates on this as we move on, you know, throughout the days, the coming days. And then let's talk about that wind risk here. Here is by 8 a.m. on Wednesday, March 4th. And we can see those greens is where we're at about 20 to 28 knot winds, which is windy. That's very gusty. And then in your yellows, that's where you're at 28 to even 36 knot winds. So you can see those are just offshore of the mid-Atlantic states. And we have a lot of those greens moving onshore, and that's enough to cause some minor damage. So we're already talking about some very, very windy conditions. It's as we head towards about 2 
p.m. on Wednesday, March 4th, that things start to look a lot more extreme. Plenty of greens and yellows making their way on shore here, especially for the southeast, which is, again, 20 to even 36 knot winds there. That's going to be very windy, enough to take some branches down uh, and maybe even on some weak structures start to cause some very minor damage. So this is going to be kind of a nuisance-type wind event here already by that point, but it's as we head towards 2 a.m. on Thursday, March 5th, that things start to look very extreme for the coastal mid-Atlantic and New England states. Just offshore, we have a lot of those reds and even purple showing up, which spells trouble. If any of that amount of wind moves on shore, that's going to be 36 to even 50 knot winds within those red colors. And then in those purples, which are pretty well offshore, thankfully, right now, that's where we're looking at 50 to 60 knot winds, which is obviously very, very extreme here. So we're going to be watching for very damaging wind there for the Mid-Atlantic and New England states in this very major bomb cyclone, kind of a nor'easter type system, but it's a little bit more onshore, so I wouldn't call it a nor'easter. Uh, and for your comment of the day, we're going to get right into that. This one is going to come from TJ Wilkins, and he said, want a lot of rain, about to start my garden back up this weekend, which is very exciting. The comment of the day, by the way, was what kind of conditions do you want for the springtime? So he obviously wants a very early um, spring so he can start getting his gardening going, which is very exciting. I enjoy gardening too. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please be safe and stay up to date with the latest information on this storm. It's going to be a very major one, I think. So please, please keep up to date with your information. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends and family, and I will see you guys in the next video.